Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Cold Turkey 16. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, out here at the Gray Fox course with our lead card from the MPO division. Christopher Meyer trying to defend the title he picked up in 2020. Dan Schlitter, Nick Robinson, along with David Heasley are all trying to get in his way. Dan Schlitter had the hot opening round, then came out and with a birdie on the last hole of the first half of the round, maintained the one-stroke lead that he started the round with. So now we have nine holes to play, holes one through nine. They started on 10, and one is a must-get birdie. It will. Just 182 feet. There's a little bit of a bush on the left and on the right that you're trying to avoid. Or you hit the bush like that, and it still gives you putt inside 15 to 20 feet. David Heasley, who has more rounds on this course than probably all three of the other competitors combined. He doesn't live too far from here, although much of his free time is taken up by caddying for a golf club not too far from here. He puts in, I think, hundreds of rounds of caddying. And Christopher starts the final nine holes with the one-stroke deficit he started the round with. Easy pickup for Nick. And I understand that statistics can be really helpful in looking at them. We had 20 competitors in the field. I think it was 19 of them carded birdies here on hole number one. This is definitely the definition of a must-get birdie. And I will say, sometimes having a short hole that feels like a must-get almost puts an additional pressure on your on the players because they know everybody else is going to birdie it. Is Dan the one? Does the chain star do it? He's going to correct it. I love that Dan goes through his routine even on what seem to be basic or simple putts. Let's staying in your routine. As they call it a routine. I'm not going to edit that. That's a star frame. I won't call out the one person that missed it. If you want to dig around on the PDGA scoring, you can. But a must get. They clean up hole number one. We head over to hole two. In other coverage, you maybe have seen hole two played to the longer position that's tucked up into the woods, making it very much a, a par four oh, yeah. of sorts. Stomp on it a couple times, it'll stick. But knowing that we have to get this round in and get both rounds in during one of the shortest daylight times of the year, we play to the shorter, much more attackable position here on hole number two at 283 feet. Dave needs some help trying to get it there. And significantly more wind than you feel on the back. You'll see that the front half of this course uh, straight skip. not only usually scenes, plays easier, but also camp. is much more open and susceptible to the windier conditions. Get up. Let's go, David! Let's go, hey, David. David! How's it going, man? <laughs> you need to visit on every hole. Like a, one of your uh, probably set them. Well, Dave does get it up just enough, finds the bottom of the basket, and 
We saw a little struggle by Christopher back on hole number 17. That wasn't with the putter. That was more with the drivers and the approaches. This putter has looked very good with the exception of hole 18. And I'm not sure Dan's putter has hit the ground. Well, and it won't now. I think one of the rare misses I can think by Dan was back on the fourth hole of the round, back on the island hole, hole 13, and that was from circle two. Wow. Back-to-back -back star frames, holes one and two. They're right there for the taking. You're going to put together a hot round. Those are two that you have to pick up. Now we go to hole three, 456 feet uphill. Probably plays at least 480, maybe even closer to five. And you really want to land it on top of the hill or just beyond where you're looking, where we John was zoomed into. And then has a little depression or a little bowl-like area that you navigate over. But you have to get to the top of the hill and then drive a good 100, 150 feet past that. Nice. It. Now sit down. And it needs to just sit. That's going to push left side rough. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, he was here we go. I thought I was past all those. Same. So that's a good question for you guys in the comments to answer right off the bat. Do you guys believe in somebody jinxing you, so to speak, or somebody nicing you? Is that something that you actively think about and or subscribe to? Is that the fact as soon as you say nice... It then hits a tree or something happens that shouldn't. So put that in the comments. I've got some double G beef jerky, gift certificates, along with some other stuff to give away. So that's what I need to know is if you actively subscribe to the whole theory of you can nice someone's disc. Well... <laughs> We've seen two or three shots by Dave that couldn't be uh, much more precise than that as he goes with the overhand. Solid approach shot for Christopher. And gives himself a look to save the par. And from a pretty similar position, we find Nick. Nick's a little bit closer, though. He might actually be able to give us a run. Hole three. Very difficult to find yourself up there for the birdie look. And you see how hard Dan's working for the par. I'll go ahead and say there were zero birdies on hole three. A lot of threes to be had and just a few bogeys. So statistically, if you're being really critical or you're just looking at some basic numbers, as fun as this hole is and as much as I love it, it doesn't seem to challenge our top players in the right way with so many pars. I didn't really mention it in the front half, but myself and another gentleman, Tom Jenkins, were the main course designers here of this property. Working with Kenosha County Parks Department. I was brought out to this property. They had a nine-hole course that was... Not exactly safe. That was deemed the Red Fox course. And then 
wanted me to expand it into 18. And ultimately, I got out there and said, hey, let's make your nine hole course safer and then create an entirely new 18. And that's what you're seeing here this weekend at the Gray Fox course. So there are 27 holes on the property and two distinct courses, 18 for Gray Fox and nine for Red Fox. And just as you see John, our cameraman, a little bit off center here, if you're standing directly on the tee, the basket is somewhat blind or at least obstructed. And so you really need to play out if you're the back, the right-handed backhand player like Dave's throwing here, you need to play it out left and then have it just Anheuser gently all the way to the right or go with a gentle forehand. You need to play it with a left to right bend. Oh, that's flipping. Misses the bush. Okay, yeah. Just use that as your whole preview. Nice flip up shot by Christopher. He's parked. I had to be careful too, because he was I was just like, yeah, I got I gotta travel for pin. Fun fact. A few years ago at this event, the famous and beloved disc maniac, Dana Vichy, aced this very hole, hole number four. You should go post that on his wall right now, now that you're watching the action, and say, hey, nice ace, hole four at Gray Fox. He'll love that. We see a pair of pars and the closest to the pin, the easy tap in for Christopher. And just like that, we're knotted back up. Holes five through nine to play. We are all tied up. Big shout out to Ledgestone. Make sure you go out to shoplis.com. And this, too, is somewhat of a blind downhill shot. It's only 201 feet. A little forehand shot should get you there just about every time. The main obstruction is, of course, going just a little bit deep, finding that three-pronged tree. Those prongs? Can I call them prongs? Are they too big? Legs? Some big old legs. Those are thick. And Dave quickly getting up, playing off one of the thick legs. <laughs> this, too, feels like a must-get birdie. And Chris lets it get by. Dan trying to regain the outright lead that he let up on the previous hole and just like that he is to 17 one ahead of Chris and to put it in perspective the, th the three easiest holes on the course are one two and five so now you've seen the three easiest played and then our final hole of the tournament for these guys is hole nine and that's the fourth easiest hole five here played at 2.37 out of our 20 person MPO field Chris letting one go there pastry dies big shout out to those guys Dylan and John John is in fact the cameraman right now so they're hustling burning the midnight burning the candle burning the midnight oil burning the candle at both wicks I'll, I'll just throw all the cliches together here At just 218, this hole is clearly not long, but it's uphill and it's blind. And it very much <laughs> needs to play for a righty as a backhand turnover, but then have it flex back and hyzer at the end. 
And that's exactly what they're trying to do. It looks like David's attempt, though, is going to be short. Asking for it to get through, but that's might be a little short. Yeah, it is. Again, just 218 feet. Oh, I thought that was in. So struggles for Christopher. Fully committed, but not enough. And you see that Dan has landed in the, well, right next to the short pin. Rarely do we see the pin place there. It's just such a fun shot. Again, 218, that plays at least 250. Maybe even more, but it's more about the accuracy. Here's Dan to go to 18. And that isn't right look at this roll there is a slight downhill slope but that is dirty and understandably maybe a little bit frazzled by that nasty roll away dan doesn't make the par putt and right now looks like he may become knotted up for the lead again with christopher All right, maybe hole 16 just doesn't want to catch anybody's diss. This basket's like a ninja trying to avoid everything that's thrown at it, good, bad, or otherwise. And truly a... I, just an outright mental lapse or meltdown here by Dan. Just a moment ago, he had the opportunity to pull two ahead of Christopher, and now he's looking at losing two strokes. Chris is going to need this for his par. Just barely sneaks it in, and Chris has to be thinking, man, I know... Thanksgiving was just a couple days ago, but that feels like a Christmas gift, an early one. Nearby competitor, Heasley, tell, tells Dan to shake it off. I, don't, I didn't sense any Taylor Swift tone in that. I think that was a legitimate shake it off. And just like that, Christopher, your outright leader, and tied right behind him with just three holes left to play, Dan Schlitter and David Heasley. We move to the very challenging par three, hole seven. This plays straight down the tunnel and then finishes up and to the right. Most importantly, you must hit this initial gap. If you don't, you're going to use a stroke or two just to get back out. Excuse me. And par will be very tough to save. And David says, hey, I just want to get it out in the open. I don't care about getting it to the pin. I'm still 150 feet short. I'm just playing for placement. And that is a really good play here. Seven likely one of the least to get birdied and I'm looking at the stats now it averages 3.26 playing as the third most difficult hole on the course so you can't be mad about a par here and that's pushing to the next tee an errant shot will a very errant shot will lead you all the way to hole 8's tee not often do you find a shot getting over there 
That's tight and probably parked for the short pin. David with the simple approach. And now Nick is off on the right-hand side. Looks like he just has a little touch forehand that quite effective. And you heard a loud thud, and I believe it had hit the garbage can. Takes the high route to try and get around the trees. Dave up here trying to save his par. Nice. Big shout out to Dave. I know he is not playing that often, not nearly as much as he used to a few years ago. And we kind of jokingly use the term off the couch. Uh, he said he got out and played a few practice rounds just within the last few weeks, but largely not a, a frequent disc golfer these days. And so to see him here battling for the lead, very impressive. And I, I'm just going to say now, wherever these scores finish out, to see someone 15, 16 under through two rounds out here is actually quite impressive. That is not necessarily a normal scoring scenario. Typically we see scores closer to the 10 to 12 under to win a tournament out here in normal conditions. So very impressive with just two holes left to play. This one sets up great for a lefty. 357 feet. Needed just a little bit more height, but with the wood line all the way along the right side, the one place you cannot be is right or short right. And so playing a forehand like we're going to see by Dave or playing the lefty hyzer is really the best possible shot. In fact, if you don't have a big enough turnover or forehand shot, the alternative is a roller. Yeah, Dave. And I'm not going to lie, that's... I didn't know Dave had that, that forehand in him. Nice shot, Dave. And the roller is tight right. And again, if you're in there, that is about the one place you can't be. You will likely be left with little to no look at birdie. Dan's got to be thinking, put himself in position here to possibly knot things up. And that will be a long putt coming back at the pin. And really, this is just jail where he's at. He, he has maybe a little bit of a lane. A moment ago, we saw Nick and Juliana. Thank you to both of them. Just... Wow, he finds the alleyway. But Nick and Juliana have been working so hard on their disc golf games, but also working along with the disc golf guy and merchandising. I believe they played in their first cold turkey just a year ago, a sanctioned event, and now playing and consuming, watching helping uh, just incredible locals and Dan knows what that means with just one hole left to play Heasley's gonna tap in and we have a tie game going into the final hole and Dan Schlitter now remains one back Talking playoffs? Is that what we're talking? You see the pin just left of center. Straight ahead. 221 feet. Again, one of the easiest holes on the course. 
comes in as the fourth easiest, averages 2.58. Get off it. Let's see. Dave Heasley range. Wow, and the kick the same Dave gives Dave a look. He's going to need this if Chris can put it up there. Meanwhile, Dan is hoping that both Chris and David can't convert. He'd like a piece of this action. We saw him in the incredible playoff back at the Disc Golf Pro Tour Silver Series event earlier in the year down at Delwood. Oh, that's a little bit tight and left. But it looks like he made it out of the tunnel. And Dan needs this to keep the pressure on. I like the aggression. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much. And he puts it all the way up there. That should be on the dance floor. And let's see if we're going to have a continuation here as we're playing the 18th and final hole. Heasley's going to be first to act. Off on the left, we see Chris on the dance floor. He's in makeable range. Dave's attempt is short. He remains at 16 under. Off in the distance, I'm doing TD things. Or just running my mouth. That's what I do. And so Christopher Meyer has this to win the tournament. And dead center. The confidence. He repeats as champion. <laughs> Coming on over. Fellow Illinois competitor, Dan Schlitter. First to congratulate him. Christopher is going to be at 17 under. The birdie here by Schlitter means him and David will have a playoff for the second and third place trophies, which, by the way, were beautiful. Thank you to all the support. Wow. And what an exciting finish here. Christopher, your champion. Nick also finishing strong after a little bit of a slow start. Good buddy, David Heasley taps in for the par. And I'm going to catch up with our champion, should I say, defending and repeat champion, Christopher Meyer. We'll see you guys for the next one. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and that was my video blog. Joined by our now repeat champion, defending champion, Christopher Meyer. Wow, some solid golf out there today. And it looks like you were getting pushed the whole way. How did yeah. it feel? Yeah, it was it was tense, yeah. It was it was anybody's round, you know, anybody's tournament. Coming down the last few holes, so yeah, I'm glad to come out on top. The way this course sets up, or at least the way you guys play it, the back nine, which is actually your first nine holes, Considerably tougher. Is that is that a fair statement? Yeah. yeah. It, it, what it, what are you thinking as you're trying to get through your first nine holes of the round? What are you thinking, either score wise or or advantage wise? Yeah, just trying to stay clean and and uh, pick up you know a couple, two, three here or there, and then try to attack the front. So. Now, when you're coming out to a course like this and you're playing in late November, it's almost December. Uh, what are you doing physically to be prepared? What are you wearing? Those types of things. What kind of prep are you doing? Layering up and hot hands and and that's about it. Yeah, trying to stay loose, stay warm. Now we've seen a lot of good play here throughout the years, but rarely do we see a defending champ in any capacity, uh, whether it's in the spring at the Skyline or it's at this event. What's the what's the secret? Dare you share it with everyone I, out there? What's the secret? I don't know. I'm new to the area. It's it's weird to take it down two years in a row. That was an old snake, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know, something about the course just suits my eye and uh, hit the lines and stayed clean and get a bunch of birdies and I don't know what it is, but it feels good. All right, any any sponsors, anyone we need to be thanking or talking about? Not, not yet, but reach out. All right, 
This guy's looking. Let's let's make it a Merry Christmas or something. Again, your champion. Big shout out to John. And thanks to all of the incredible sponsors and helpers here at the tournament. It's been a lot of fun here this weekend. But again, this guy takes it down. We'll hey, catch sir. you guys at the next one.